Alright, so today we're going to go over how to solve an inequality involving a polynomial. So whenever you solve an inequality involving polynomials, it's very important that you get one of the sides equal to zero, preferably the right side of your inequality. The reason you want to do this is because you want to know whether or not your polynomial is greater than or is less than zero. Uh, because our inequality is less than zero, we know that we want our polynomial to be negative. We're going to start off uh, solving this inequality by factoring the left side. Don't mind my nephew. He is uh, being taken care of my sister right now. So I'm not neglecting him. Alright, so uh, after we factor out the GCF of x, we're going to then factor the resulting quadratic polynomial inside of the parentheses. And so what we end up with is we end up with x times x minus 2 times x plus 1 is less than 0. Now, like I said earlier, uh, this left side is going to be negative. Uh, the product of these three uh, factors is going to be negative. Uh, we know that it's not going to be equal to zero. So, uh, however, it's very important to know uh, when these factors is equal to zero because that's going to determine the endpoints of the intervals that contain the solutions to this inequality. So, setting each of these factors equal to zero gives us endpoints of negative one. 0 and 2. Now we want to plug in values um, in each of the different intervals divided by these endpoints. So we want to plug in values to the left of negative 1, between negative 1 and 0, between 0 and 2, and between 2 and um, after, um, and after 2. So we're going to pick different numbers in these intervals and test them out in our um, factored form of the polynomial. So we're going to start by testing out something to the left of negative 1, so something like negative 2. When I plug in negative 2 into the factored form, what I end up with is negative 2 times negative 4 times negative 1. I have the product of three negative numbers, which is also a negative number. Therefore, negative two satisfies my uh, inequality, which means uh, that the interval x is less than uh, negative 1 is going to be part of my solutions. So next we pick a number between negative 1 and 0 to test, to test up. Something like negative 0 0.5. I repeat the process. So we plug in negative 0 0.5. We get negative 0 0.5 times negative 2.5 times positive 0 0.5. So I have a negative, a negative, and a positive. This is going to give me a positive number. And so this leads to a, a false solution to my original inequality. Uh, so this interval is not going to be part of my solutions. Now we're going to go ahead and test out a number between 0 and 2. So let's go ahead and test with the number 1. When I plug in 1, I end up with 1 times negative 1 times 2. This gives me a negative number. So this is less than 0. 
and therefore uh, the interval between 0 and 2 is going to be part of my solutions. I'm almost there. I just got to test out one more interval and that interval is the interval after 2. So I'm going to pick something like 3. When I plug in 3, I end up with 3, 1, and 4. Product of 4, uh, product of 3 positive numbers gives me a positive number as which is going to be a false statement. So therefore we're not going to include this interval. Alright, so now that we've done all of the tests, we're going to go ahead and conclude that our solutions are the set of x's such that either x is less than negative 1 or 0 is less than x is less than 2.